you see me shaking, it's uh, not because I'm scared, it's because I'm freezing. <laughs> or maybe a little bit of both. Um, Virginia Woolf is my favourite of all the great modernist writers. And she once said that the one and only experience that she would never write about would be her own death. Um, fortunately for us as readers, she did write about every other experience in wonderful, luminous detail. William Banks was praising the Waverley novels. He read one of them every six months, he said. And why should that make Charles Tansley angry? He rushed in, all thought Mrs. Ramsay, because Prue will not be nice to him, and denounced the Waverley novels when he knew nothing about it, nothing about it whatsoever, Mrs. Ramsay thought, observing him rather than listening to what he said. She could see how it was from his manner. He wanted to assert himself, and so it would always be with him till he got his professorship or married his wife, and so need not always be saying, I, I, I. For that was what his criticism of poor Sir Walter, or perhaps it was Jane Austen, amounted to, I, I, I. He was thinking of himself and the impression he was making, as she could tell by the sound of his voice and his emphasis and his uneasiness. Success would be good for him. At any rate, they were off again. Now she need not listen. It could not last, she knew, but at the moment her eyes were so clear that they seemed to go round the table, unveiling each of these people and their thoughts and their feelings without effort, like a light stealing underwater so that its ripples and the reeds in it and the minnows balancing themselves and the sudden silent trout are all lit up, hanging, trembling. So she saw them, she heard them, but whatever they said had also this quality, as if what they said was like the movement of a trout, when at the same time one can see the ripple in the gravel, something to the right, something to the left, and the whole is held together. For whereas in active life, she would be netting and separating one thing from another. She would be saying she liked the Waverley novels or had not read them. She would be urging herself forward. Now she said nothing. For the moment, she hung suspended. Ah, but how long do you think it'll last? Said somebody. It was as if she had antennae trembling out from her which, intercepting certain sentences, forced them upon her attention. This was one of them. She scented danger for her husband. A question like that would lead almost certainly to something being said which reminded him of his own failure. How long would he be read, he would think at once. William Banks, who was entirely free from all such vanity, laughed and said he attached no importance to changes in fashion. Who could tell what was going to last, in literature or indeed in anything else? Let us enjoy what we do enjoy, he said. His integrity seemed to Mrs. Ramsay quite admirable. He never seemed for a moment to think, but how does this affect me? But then, if you have the other temperament, which must have praise, which must have encouragement, naturally you began, and she knew that Mr. Ramsay was beginning to be uneasy to want somebody to say, oh, but your work will last, Mr. Ramsay, or something like that. He showed his uneasiness quite clearly now by saying, with some irritation, that anyhow Scott, or was it uh, Shakespeare, would last him his lifetime. He said it irritably. Everybody, she thought, felt a little uncomfortable without knowing why. Then Minter Doyle, whose instinct was fine, said bluffly, absurdly, that she did not believe that anyone really enjoyed reading Shakespeare. 